William in Hancock, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, writes to me and he says, Paul, first off, I'm a big fan of PS Audio's Perfect Wave DAC. Thank you, sir. Uh, and hope to bring one home someday. Um, my question is about soundstage and imaging. I have my speakers set up about one-third the way into the room, kind of like this is. They play clean and precise. The soundstage is a clear center image on a flat plane between the speakers. All right, like this. Nice. My audio engineer friend, who teaches at the Berkeley School of Music, told me that room treatments would greatly improve the speaker's performance. So I built a bunch of absorbing and diffusing panels, and he helped me place them in strategic locations. And something odd happened. The soundstage changed. Rather than a flat plane, even with the front of the speakers, everything jumped behind the speakers into a palpable 3D image with great depth and pinpoint location of musicians. The speakers are pointed forward, yet now everything is happening behind the speakers. Can you explain how this is happening? Is that supposed to happen? Yes! You've reached nirvana, sir! You got it! <laughs> we want the sound to come from behind the speakers. We do not want it to come from in front. But why is that strange? Because the sound we know comes from these drivers and it moves forward. So how in the hell is it going to appear to come from behind here? Is it a clever magic trick? Well, kind of. So I want you to think of something. I'm going to give you an example of how to imagine what it should be. Okay? Imagine that these speakers are not speakers, but they are microphones. Okay? They're recording microphones. And there's a band back here. Okay? I'm going to record this band. What do I do? I'm going to turn the microphones around and face back this way, and I'm going to record that band. Now, when I'm recording the band, I've got all the room and everything in the recording. And of course, this is just an example to help you understand what's going on, and I've captured the room from behind the microphones. Now, when I play that back, I'm going to flip the microphones back and point them towards me, and now they become speakers. So if everything is set up right, that sound should come from behind there, because that's where it was captured. But that's a little bit simplistic. Um, I, I don't know with words that I can explain exactly how that all happens, but imagine how a stereo works and how we hear sound and why we can sense that something is in front of us, in back of us, or what its relative position in space is. And we do that by this complex network of time arrivals, of phase information that tell us where things are in space. So when you make a recording, and this, I, I, I know I'm, I'm swirling the waters like a shark. <laughs> when you make a recording, if the person is very close to the microphone, then it will sound, when you play it back, like they're very close to the speaker, and it'll be right here. When we back away a little bit, which is how in a recording we get depth, we, we either capture the room or we capture the person a little bit far away, all of a sudden it moves back from us. Because if it moved forward of the speaker, the speakers would not be doing their job properly because the phase angles are all wrong. So they should appear from behind as if someone was behind the microphone as opposed to coming straight up. Uh, and in no time should the sound appear to come from, from here. Okay, So the ear is hearing these phase differences as we move away from the microphone and it's interpreting it as being in front of us but then moving back. In the audiophiles guide, 
the, the little book and CD that I produced, one of the things we have is a depth test, which I think is fascinating. If you do have a chance to hear it or download it, it's great because we have a singer that's close and then they move back and then they move back again. And each time they tell you, I'm three feet, I'm six feet, I'm nine feet. And you can hear them moving away from the microphone. And we have to remember that these are the analog of a microphone or the opposite of a microphone, right? So this is playing, and I know it's hard to imagine that because it's projecting sound this way that it doesn't sound like that, but the ear hears this distance from the source, from the microphone, and that puts it back behind here. Maybe not the greatest explanation, and I will keep trying, I promise. We, we've been through this a few times, and we'll keep trying. And maybe each time, I'll make a little bit of a dent, and you'll, and you'll get it. And that's my goal. Thanks for the question. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.